position And she drives my blues away this is KPFA or KPF Fever or KFCF Fresno. Up next, about health with Dr. Michael Lenore. Good health and welcome to today's edition of About Health. I'm your host, Dr. Mike Lenore. Uh, let's see, let me make sure I get things all organized. I'm so excited about the fun drive, I'm a little disorganized here. All right, I think I can hear now. Can you hear me? All right, well, welcome to today's, finally, welcome to today's issue of About Health. I'm, I'm Dr. Michael Lenord. Today we're going to be talking with uh, two guests. Uh, first of all, Debbie Rosas and Carlos Rosas talked to us a little bit about the NIA technique. NIA standing for Neuromuscular Integrative Action, uh, which is a type of uh, fitness, uh, which I think we ought to introduce to our audience, uh, kind of keep us up on some of the latest techniques and uh, mind and work. And for uh, much of our hour, we're going to spend time talking about herbal medicine. Uh, I think we have a very special guest for you today, uh, the... Um, the um, the topic of herb, the, the the topic of herbal medicine has been um, something we wanted to do again for quite some time, so we'll have a special guest um, uh, for that particular segment. But first, let's talk about um, let's talk about neuromuscular uh, integrative action uh, and this, this type of exercise. Our special guest, Debbie and uh, Carlos Rosas, welcome to our program. Oh, thank, well, thank you. you. Okay. You so now, your technique has been around for quite a while. Just describe it, uh, how you got interested in it and some of the evolution of it. Well, actually, Nia was uh, created in 1983 in Marin County, and it got started because Carlos and I uh, came from a traditional fitness background and realized that we really had lost our body's natural ability to move, and we'd lost the joyful connection and really the connection of the wisdom of the body that is there when we move in conscious ways. Um, and we took off our shoes, went into a martial art dojo, and realized that there was a whole lot more to moving the body uh, than we realized. And that set us on a quest to really discover how to move consciously, which we began by studying the martial arts. Tell us a little bit about uh, how, what was the reaction to, um, you've been in this fit, in the fitness areas for a number of years, and uh, were people surprised that you had evolved this particular technique? Well, I would say that people were happily surprised that we had, you know, in, introduced organic movement into a fitness program. People were happy, happily surprised that we integrated imagery, that we added uh, pleasure, and then also the uh, the possibility of building a healthy body without pain. Also, people were very surprised that we actually brought uh, um, imagination, like I said before, but also expression sound, emotion, and how um, therapeutic it was without really it having to go into this sense of doing therapy, how the body, by releasing through sound while it gets blocked in the body, began to act as medicine, and then people began to experience self-healing of the body, the emotions, and the spirit, as well as a coming effect and invigorating effect to the mind. Now, how was this different? Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, Michael, you know, people were really shocked when we took off our shoes, which was something back then in the um, in the 80s. You can imagine the height of the aerobic boom. We took off our shoes and said, we're not only going to do this barefoot, but we're going to stop jumping up and down. So initially, people thought us thought we were a little crazy, except the people that were already in the healing and the somatic industry, they knew that there was a tremendous amount of benefit in moving the body versus exercising the body mechanically. When you talk about uh, outcomes, I think that was what many people, because when, he, when you talk about your technique, you talk about a new body. Well, what does that mean different, say, from classic aerobics or high-impact aerobics? Well, a new body really has to do with getting to know your body via the body's way. And, you know, the design of the body is so brilliant, and oftentimes we forget to really use our body in the way that it is designed to be used. So the new body is a body that 
is informing you of how to live in your body via sensation. We teach people to listen to the voices of their body and to choose pleasure over pain. We teach people how to use 13 main joints, for instance, to start the movement of energy flow. So throughout the day, they can check their body to find out whether or not there's stagnant energy in any part of their body. Now, you were probably among the first uh, to, to kind of integrate, to put this concept together. There have been a number of other kind of offshoots of these, these kinds of, this kind of exercise, but yours is very different in the sense of mind-body integration as you do this. It's not just a uh, let's come in and let's get kind of going and let's just see how much we can, how many calories we can lose. Um, uh, things like um, uh, like uh, Tai Bo and other, other kinds of, how, how, tell us a little bit about the difference between those kinds uh, of kind of the, where they integrate some of the martial uh, arts into the exercise and your exercise. I know it's a little smoother, a little free, more free flowing, a little more versatile. Well, you know, one of the uh, one of the differences is that we integrate nine different movement forms. Some of the other techniques out there, they basically do one or two movement forms, but we have nine movement forms. We have Tai Chi, Taekwondo, Aikido. We have Jazz, Modern Dance, Duncan Dance. We use the Feldenkrais method, the Alexander Technique, as well as yoga, not to mention an endless amount of different folkloric dances as well as any kind of dance where people move their body. So Nia is not limited to one or two movement forms. And then what we do throughout with those movement forms is we work very closely also with the nervous system. And in a way, what we like to do is we, we like to duplicate life in the way that life is full of dynamics. Sometimes we're slow, sometimes we're fast, sometimes we really are in a hurry, sometimes we need peace, sometimes we need to get going. You know, sometimes it's very important to invigorate the body, and then in the next second we need to be completely focused and concentrated. And this is an aspect of the Nia technique that is very different from other techniques. Also, the music that we use is, is um, it's not just a, a matter of increasing the beat so that people get going. We can use any kind of music and any speed on any time during the class and we use the frequency of the music according to the movement and then really paying attention to how it's going to influence the dancer, the mover. You talk about katas in your book. Uh, what are they? Uh, excuse me, would you repeat that again? You talk about katas, K-A-T-I-S, am I saying katas. that right? Katas, yes, yes. Right. Oh, yes, the katas are, are basically a series of movements that are put together that are really designed to... Um, that condition the body and also integrate the body, mind, emotion, spirit. The, uh, there's a chapter in the book that is called the 52 moves and those 52 moves are designed to help somebody get in touch with their body from the ground up, from the base, their core, and then the upper extremities. And it's put together in a way where people can do one movement a week, basically, and at the end of the year, they really will have an entirely new relationship with their body, not only much more understanding as to how their body works, but much more body awareness as to what joints that they have that need a little more mobility or stability, um, what movements are more natural to them, what movements make them feel uh, empowered, etc. So people get a great opportunity to go through the whole body with this particular chapter in the book. You know, a lot of people exercise, but they're not really connected to their body and connected to sensation. And we believe that that is crucial to developing a program where you actually have not only get the benefits of exercise, but also begin to create personal growth and lifestyle changes that last forever. Tell us about the book itself, The Nia Technique, the high power energizing workout that gives you a new body and a new life. Tell us uh, but what finally after these years, all these years made you write this book. Well, after 22 years of doing this work and, and literally thousands and thousands of people 
sending us letters and telling us stories of their healing and how Nia, in their own words, they say how Nia has changed their life and saved their life. We felt that it was important to take the concepts of this work as well as the personal stories and make them available to the general public in a much bigger way. And um, so it's 22 years of work in a very user-friendly format that gives people an opportunity to read personal stories from people whose lives have been changed by this work, um, people that have had arthritis as well as people that have been in recovery from drug and alcohol abuse as well as people that um, are athletic and very physically fit. The book includes many different unique components, such as an energy personality test. And, you know, quite often, uh, Michael, people have one style of energy. They're either a calm person or they're, they're a little more highly active. And we know that the body, based on its design, the nervous system says we're designed to move fast and slow. And so... This energy personality test gives people an opportunity to discover, are they more of a Tai Chi person, more of a Taekwondo person? And then the book helps them really become very well balanced. There are two workouts in the book. There's a mobility and a stability test. Uh, and there's also an area that's called the pleasure journal. And I know that for most people, they rarely take time to journal about things that give them pleasure. And quite often, they're more motivated by things that are uncomfortable to create change. And we say do the opposite. Find out what you really love. Find out what gives you pleasure and comfort in your body. And that will create change. Is, isn't it good for people with certain kinds of ailments? You know, there's this, are there special, your, your technique of exercise and fitness, uh, is it good for people with particular kinds of, um, of arthralgias or uh, there's some, some group of, um, of uh, maladies that you think Nia works better for than others? Yes, uh, Nia is um, so widely used in both, le- in both the well population and the short and long term illness population. And because Nia, we teach people to do things in a very personal way in their own way and in their own time, and everything is sensory-based, that people that have arthritis or fibromyalgia or people with MS, uh, people that are, are dealing with stress and anxiety disorders, they benefit greatly from this work because it empowers them to really deal with whatever is up for them in their body, and it helps them learn how to move in their body and live in their body in ways that are comfortable and that work for them. And uh, we have teachers that teach this work in pain clinics. Um, people have used it for uh, people who are uh, doing chemotherapy, and the the results are remarkable. You have a couple of upcoming appearances in the Bay Area. Tell us about those. Yes, we're going to be um, on February 25th. We're going to be doing a class um, at Nautilus of Marin, which is in San Rafael, California, in the morning at 8.45. And then uh, in the evening in Walnut Creek, we'll be doing a class on February 25th from 7 to 8.30 at the Renaissance Club Sport. Then on the 26th, we'll be doing our class from 8.30 to 9.50 in the morning at Dance Mission Theater. That's in San Francisco. And then we have a Borders uh, book signing, which will be at 2 p.m. at 400 Post Street. And there we'll be really telling our personal story, which is the story behind how we began Nia, why, as well as our personal um, past and history and how that has played a big part in the creation of Nia. Is there a website where people can go to get specifics again in case they miss what we just said? Yes, they can go to the Nia website, uh, which is nia-nia.com. And uh, if they'd like information specifically about the any of the events in California, they can call 510-847-4617. Four, six, one, six. Repeat that one more time. 510-847-4616 or log on to the website www.nia-nia.com. All right, well, thank and you very much. NIA. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank Mike. you very much. Any 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 form of fitness that includes Mustang Sally as part of its uh, curriculum has got my attention.
Well, you know, music is a great healing component, and it really helps people to move and express themselves in very healing ways. Well, well that's one of our all-time favorites. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, we want yes, to. Uh, I hope that people go to the website, uh, take a look. Uh, and um, and uh, so uh, attend uh, some of these workshops and get the book signed. It's a fascinating book. Thank you for the book, Nia Technique, um, the high-powered, energizing workout that gives you a new body. Um, thank you very much, uh, the results. Thanks, Michael. All right, take it. Have a good day. All right, all right now let's go to our next guest. J Justo Muscat, he is the director of the San Francisco Botanical Medical Clinic. He is an herbalist, and we appreciate him taking the time to join us. Joshua, thank you. You're welcome. Tell us a little bit about how you how you got interested in herbal medicine as a way to um, um, deal uh, with healing. Well, it started because I was having health problems of my own, and you know, from the time I was a young child, I had very bad uh, allergies, sinus, and skin, and as well as uh, general sensitivity to. Uh, you know, various things that are found in the environment, including perfumes, dust, what have you. And, uh, you know, I, I took a lot of uh, Seldane, which is a drug that's, that used to be given a lot more for allergies in the, you know, in the past and what have you when I was a kid. And as I became uh, a teenager, I started to actually worsen quite a bit. And at some point, uh, I kind of reached a critical point and started to look for other ways of dealing with my problems. Um, long story short of it is that eventually I found help through herbal medicine as well as, you know, paying attention to what I was eating and, you know, other lifestyle factors. But um, herbal medicine made a huge difference in my life. And it was at a time when I was, you know, looking for a place to put my energy in the world. And so uh, it seemed natural to me that it was something that was not being readily offered and so that I should offer it since I knew about it. Tell us a little bit about your training. Well, let's see, I've uh, studied at various places, most notably at the Pacific School of Herbal Medicine with Adam Seller, which is uh, here in Oakland. Um, also at the Southwest School of Botanical Medicine uh, with Michael Moore, who's a very good herbalist. Uh, Karen Sanders, who has a show on the radio here on uh, the Herbal Highway, I studied quite a bit with her. Uh, Chuck Garcia, who is a local native uh, practitioner, uh, his title is actually Kieran Darrow. Um, he taught me quite a bit, and also I studied with Nam Singh, who also speaks on the radio here, who teaches traditional uh, tonic Chinese cooking. But beside that, I've also studied um, both independently and in school, um, you know, the, the medical sciences and what have you. I feel it's important to be well-versed in that since it's the main language of healthcare in our society. There's a difference between types of herbal medicine. We've uh, we've talked with uh, more Eastern herbal herbalists who use tongue and pulse as diagnostic test techniques. What's the difference between Eastern and Western herbal medicine? Well, the main differences have are twofold. For one, uh, the plants that I use are from this part of the world. So you know, I, I use a lot of plants that actually are native to um, you know California and the surrounding states. Whereas a Chinese herbalist is more likely to use, um, you know, plants that are native to China and that are grown there. Although, you know, of course, I do use some Chinese herbs, and I'm sure many Chinese herbalists use Western herbs, but it's just the, you know, mainstay of my practice is based on Western plants. Uh, beyond that, it really has to do with the metaphors that are used to understand what uh, is going on with a person's body, how the human body works, how the world works, how plants work, and how those, you know, meet a person's body to create change. For instance, in Chinese medicine, uh, the, the predominant metaphors have to do with the concept of qi, uh, yin and yang, the five elements, the meridians, which are, you know, channels of energy that run through the body. And, you know, for myself, I, I tend to mostly understand the body through what we know about it through science. And, uh, you know, and so I, I understand the patterning based on those concepts. It's not to say that one metaphor is better than the other. It's just different. When you say through science, exactly. You mean that more, uh, more like uh, what we, how we view it from traditional medical perspectives? Or? Yeah, I mean, you know, like when I think about what's going on with a person, you know, for instance, who has allergies, I'm thinking about the fact that their liver, whose job it is to take, you know, the immune complexes out of the bloodstream after they're, you know, done, may not be doing that, you know, quite as well as it should, and that maybe we should be using an herb that will increase blood flow to the liver to help it perform its functions more readily. You know, so it's more uh, based on literal concepts of what is happening in the body rather, rather than, you know, the, the metaphors. But, you know, when it comes down to it, I see science as a metaphor, too, because it's an incomplete set of knowledge just like anything else. Now, what, when, what, where do your herbs come from? 
Well, let's see, various places. Um, I do wild harvest a good percentage of what I use in the clinic. Um, so, you know, I'll travel throughout California and the surrounding states picking things. And uh, one thing that's always important for me to mention around that is that as herbal medicine becomes more popular, the harvesting of wild herbs has become more problematic because some of them are starting to become less available from large companies over harvesting. And um, so, you know, so I just like to mention that we're very careful to only use plants that can be sustainably harvested in that fashion, and we only take what we need and are very careful not to damage the stands of plants. Uh, but, you know, if if I'm not able to get something myself, I know various people throughout the country who can harvest things for me and send them in the mail, or sometimes I do uh, get pre-prepared medicine from other herbalists. Uh, but, yeah, that's pretty much it. When we say standardized herbal extracts in the store, what does that mean? Yeah, that's actually a very important thing for people to understand. Um, standardized extracts are when a either a liquid extract or a capsule or some form of herbal medicine is made to have a certain amount of a particular chemical per dose. And that can be done in a variety of ways. Um, and so... You know, oftentimes what is considered to be the active ingredient in the plant is what the preparation is standardized to. So you might get a capsule of St. John's wort that is standardized to have a certain amount of a chemical called hypericin, which is thought by some people to, ha to be responsible for the action of the plant. Now, um, with, a, with a couple of exceptions, I don't recommend the use of standardized extracts, and that's for two reasons. One is that I believe that most plants have more than one chemical that is responsible for their action. They're, you know, plants are dramatically complex biological entities, and I don't think we really understand what many or any of them actually really do fully chemically when it comes to their use as medicine. And so, you know, and I've often find them to be ineffective. You know, people often have come to me after taking standardized extracts and not having success. The other problem is that some of them because they're very concentrated, substances can actually be a bit harmful. Um, an example is ginkgo. You know, as a tincture, which is a form of an alcohol extract that is representative of the broader chemistry of the plant, it helps to get more oxygen to the brain and, is, and therefore is often used to enhance memory. Uh, but um, as the standardized extract, it can often give people headaches, and I've seen that happen time and time again. So. Uh, there are a couple exceptions, though, like milk thistle is a plant that I think is really best used as a standardized extract, standardized to silomarin, and it's good for the liver. So, right, Tell us a little bit about your uh, clinic and what kind of services you offer. Yeah, well, the clinic is called the San Francisco Botanical Medicine Clinic, and um, I've been operating that for the past eight or so years, and I provide uh, two basic types of services. First off, there is uh, healthcare services. You know, people come for a variety of different reasons. I was actually before the show just writing down uh, the different things that I'm currently treating people for, working with them to overcome, and I think I wrote down like uh, 20 or so different things at the moment. Um, you know, so I sit down with people, I talk to them about what their problem is. I like to learn about. Uh, what their you know history has been in terms of you know from depending on the complexity of the problem that they're having we might need to go from day of birth to present you know oftentimes things like substance use or hereditary issues come into play and so the conversation can often last quite a while um, you know usually it's about a two hour conversation sometimes it can go as long as three and I'm looking for patterns that can be affected using plants diet or other measures that I'm aware of. And, uh, you know, over time, we work using these substances and approaches to ch change things. So that's the basic service. And, you know, I provide both acute care, which would be things like, you know, infections, like urinary tract infections, cold or flu, uh, things like that. And also more long-term chronic things, which is where I think uh, herbal medicine really shines in the ability to subtly influence the metabolism over time. Um, so, yes, yeah, that. And then we also offer education. Uh, so the program is pretty small right now, but it's slowly increasing. And uh, we teach classes just trying to get people to have accurate information so that they can have success using plants uh, on their own. You know, I talk to a lot of people who are interested 
in herbal medicine but don't know where to get good information. So I'm just trying to, you know, demystify because there's a lot of uh, poorly delivered information out there. All right. We're talking with uh, with uh, herbalist Joshua Muscat. Am I saying that right? That's correct, yes. Uh, a number here, if you want to join us, talk to an herbalist at 848-4425, 848-4425 or 1-800-958-9008. Uh, 1-800-958-9008, but 848-4425 is the uh, more available number. Uh, if you want to join us, if you've got a problem, a question I ask for an herbalist, this is about the only place you're going to get that kind of information and get this opportunity to talk to um, to Joshua Muscat, who is um, an herbalist in, San, in the San Francisco area. Uh, later on in the program, we're going to talk about a special offer that he's making in order to support KPFA, but if you want to join us, uh, 848-4425 is the number. All right, Kathleen, let's, uh, from Oakland, let's go. Uh, you're first on About Health. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is about uh, red yeast rice for cholesterol. I, I just want to know if, what's the difference between that and statins, and why is that safer you know, than I, taking a statin? Uh, I really don't have anything to, to say about that. I, I've heard about red yeast rice and its effect on cholesterol, but I don't have any experience in that, nor have I really looked into it that that deeply. Um, my approach towards cholesterol is obviously, first of all, to work on the diet, although I found that many people have high cholesterol even when they're eating low cholesterol diets. And so when that occurs, I start to look at liver function because the liver is where cholesterol can be synthesized uh, even you know if you're not eating it from other substances and sometimes if the liver is over functioning that can be a cause of uh, high cholesterol but I'm sorry I don't have much information to offer you about the red yeast rice. All right thank you for asking that question Kevin. Let's go to Julie in Sebastopol. You're on about health. Hi um, I wanted to know about whether or not you've dealt with children um, along the lines of disorders like ADD, ADHD um, uh, adolescent um, bipolar disorder, things like that. I, I have worked with children uh, who were dealing with ADD, um, and I found that you can be successful with that with a, a variety of different approaches. You know, one of the things that needs to be uh, dealt with there is making sure that first of all the diet is in order. You know, diet can make a huge difference in terms of the nervous system uh, functioning of a child or anybody for that matter, but you know, in this case, a child. Um, beyond that, I approach each case individually. You know, one thing I'm very, uh, I don't know, fond of saying, but I often do say is that, you know, two people who have the same situation, you know, named condition like ADD or arthritis or whatever are going to, you know, manifest that in a very, in a way that's very unique to them. And so I, I don't have a pat herbal response to ADD, but rather I would assess the child as a unique individual and see what sort of needs they had. You know, I'd want to know about, you know, what was going on during the gestation period. What, you know, what was smoking involved? Was there any sort of an extreme diet happening, that, you know, while the, while the child was growing? Uh, what happened, you know, what, what was their birth like? What was early childhood like? You know, lo looking for clues as to what might explain the, the current situation. And once that was identified, you know, then I would be in a better position to make recommendations for how to potentially attempt to change things. Now, that being said, I want to make it very clear that, you know, a lot of situations can be helped with herbal medicine, but I don't want to give the impression that, you know, it's a cure-all for everything in every situation. You know, sometimes, you know, though we try our best, uh, things don't work out. But on the other hand, oftentimes I've seen some amazing things happen. So, you know, if there's a child that you know with ADD, it's certainly worth at least talking to a practitioner about it and seeing what they might be able to offer you with an intake. 8484425 is our number. Our special guest, Joshua Muscat, herbalist uh, using the Western Herbal Medicine Technique. Uh, certainly a good resource and opportunity for you to talk to an herbalist later on in our program. We're going to give you an opportunity, a special opportunity he's given us to support KPFA, so stay tuned. Let's go to D in Oakland. You're on About Health. Hi, good afternoon. I'm calling to how can one improve their circulation <clears throat> and capillary health if you have varicose veins? What herb, I know walking and taking vitamin E to increase, you know, that's in your blood, but um, what herbally should one use, tea or something like that, or tincture? Right. Well, you know, the first thing that I would uh, go to is something that is high in flavonoids. 
Uh, flavonoids are substances that are found in many plants, including many vegetables that we eat, um, that serve different functions throughout the body. But one of the things a flavonoid does is to strengthen the structural uh, components of the circulatory system. So, you know, with varicose uh, veins and what have you, part of the problem can be that the uh, veins have gained too great a level of elasticity, so they stretch more than they should. Um, you know, supplementing with flavonoids through either eating blueberries, raspberries, blackberries can be a good source of that. Or if you wanted to go with something a little, you know, more exotic, uh, like prickly pear fruit is very high in flavonoids. Um, so that's one approach I would take. You know, that's probably the first one I would take. If that doesn't pan out or if it helps but not completely, the other thing I would look at is whether or not there is some sort of uh, congestion in the liver. And the reason for this is that um, if there is a congested fluid flow through the liver, that can create a backflow of pressure on the lower extremities of the body and create a uh, fluid bogginess. So, you know, that, was more, that would be more likely if in association with the uh, varicose veins, you also kind of had a sense of heaviness in the pelvis, heaviness in the legs, um, a sense of sluggishness when, when walking or moving the lower part of the body. So a plant that could help with that is ocotillo um, and also stone root. Uh, both of these help to get better lymphatic drainage in the lower part of the body. All right, thank you for that question. Let's go to Ann and Ronut Park. You're on About Health. Hi. Um, I just, just turned on your program and I heard somebody asking about red yeast, red rice yeast for cholesterol. Correct. Yeah, and um, I used a product called Cholestine, which is red rice yeast, uh, for over a year. And um, I had a lot of trouble, but I didn't know what was causing it. Um, my thyroid stimulating hormone jumped from 2.9 to 15.9 suddenly, and I've always had a normal thyroid. Um, I got bone spurs in the back of my heels. Um, I, ha I was going to physical therapy. This was all over a year's time. Um, a lot of pain, a lot of pain in the knees and in the arms. And a Kaiser doc told me that the red rice yeast has exactly as much statins in it as the drugs that are that they're giving for lowering cholesterol. And so um, I went off of it, and immediately my thyroid stimulating hormone dropped to normal. And um, slowly but surely, all of these pains, including sciatica, they're slowly going away um, from not using that product. Well, thank you for mentioning that. And, you know, what your story brings up an important point. You know, I speak with many, 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 many people about, you know, overcoming health problems with uh, alternative methods. And I'm constantly being shown new things that, that are being discovered or new methods that are coming out. And, you know, my opinion is being asked of it. And one thing I think is important is that if something that, you know, is coming around that has not been evaluated for a long period of time, it's important to approach it somewhat cautiously because, you know, biological substances have dramatic effects on, on the body, you know, and, and if this uh, substance has not been, you know, had a long history of use for this particular function, we may not know that the full effects of you know, what it might cause in the body. So it's always good to be cautious when using something that is kind of a new or fad item. All right, we're talking about herbal medicine. Our guest, Joshua Muscat, he is a uh, herbalist. He's the director of the, the Botanical Medical Clinic and located in San Francisco. If you want a chance to talk to an herbalist, this may be, we call this, um, uh, Joshua, the most inexpensive second opinion town, not the cheapest, but the most inexpensive. 8484425 is our number. Are there some herbs that you can take from just maintaining general good health? I mean, something that's available to people that you can get, uh, you know, just across the counter or in a health food store, or something that you would recommend, like we do vitamins and other forms of uh, supplements. My favorite uh, herbs for general day-to-day -day health are vegetable. Um, you know, that, that's a question that people always ask me is, what herb should I take on a daily basis to imp keep my health, you know, in good shape? And I say broccoli, you know, cabbage, you know, things like that, kale, dandelion leaves. Uh, you know, and that's kind of a funny answer, but it, I, I really believe it's true. I think that when we're talking about medicinal plants in terms of what I use with people when they come to visit me at the clinic, those are things that I like to use for a limited period of time. 
uh, until they can get into a greater state of functionality for themselves and then not need them. I think on a day-to-day basis, it's best if we you know, use the more subtle, nutritive plants to keep ourselves healthy. And um, now that, that being said, there are some plants that are generally good tonics for people and safe to use on a long-term basis. Uh, for instance, nettles, uh, red clover, oat straw, alfalfa, uh, rad raspberry leaf. These are all plants that can be made into tea and offer nutritive benefit. You know, they're, they're high in uh, minerals, amino acids, uh, various types of vitamins, um, and they also are high in electrolytes. So, you know, nettle and red clover is a good herbal um, Gatorade, so to speak, to drink after exercising to replace the electrolytes and what have you. Um, but, you know, I, I think it's better not to use herbs if you don't need them. I mean, I, the, what I always like to tell people is when you're done, you know, using plants, the thing to do is frolic. You know, you, it's better just to enjoy plants uh, as things that grow rather than eat them if you don't need to. Are there um, some places where you buy where you think the quality of the nutrient quality of the vegetables are better than other places? Um, how do people make that selection? Well, you know, I mean, I think the jury is out on whether or not um, organic food does literally have a higher nutrient quality. But my personal belief is that organic food would offer greater benefit to the body. Um, So, you know, I I recommend supporting uh, the farmer's market in Berkeley if people live in the East Bay. Uh, Farmer's markets in general are good things to support going directly to the farmer's. But, you know, if not there, then any store that sells organic produce, uh, preferably the smaller the store, the better. I think that, you know, we, we need to support the small people. All right, a few more minutes with Noah Muscott, the, um, who's an herbalist, who's the director of the Botanical Medical Clinic in San Francisco. Uh, so, let, so let's go to Wilma. You're on About Health. Is it Wilma? Hello? All right. What about the financial aspects of herbal medicine? Does insurance uh, cover it, or how does that work? And how well do you, how often do you work with traditional medical practitioners in trying to do what you do? Well, I'll answer the financial question first. Is that no? Currently, uh, insurance does not cover uh, herbal medicine, which is unfortunate. Um, so the way I work with that is I charge what I charge, which is basically twenty-five dollars for an initial consultation, ten dollars for follow-ups. Uh, plus the cost of herbs, which of course is variable. And if people cannot afford that, I uh, offer work trade. And if people, for whatever reason, cannot do work trade, then I offer services for free. You know, my feeling is that uh, a person who needs their health care needs met should not have money be a deciding factor in that. And I personally cannot turn away somebody who is looking for help because they can pay me for it. Um, so, th- so that's kind of how I deal with that. I would love to be able to take insurance, but I can't, unfortunately. Um, herbal medicine is has recently become legal to practice in California due to California Senate Bill 577. So that is nice, and you know who knows what will happen in the future. Uh, in terms of interfacing with medical professionals, I, I do that quite regularly. I um, you know, oftentimes people who are coming in for uh, whatever they're working on have already been taking medication and they're either going to continue to do that or they want to get off of it or what have you. But for various reasons, I end up interfacing with their medical practitioners quite often. And I also do go to medical people for advice on issues surrounding drugs and what have you that I'm not as familiar with. All right, we have time for a couple more calls. Let's take Bill and Concord and then maybe one more. Uh, Bill, you're on about health. Hi. Uh, I have a friend that has uh, MS, and he's uh, in bed most of the time. He can get out in a wheelchair. Um, he's taken a diuretic uh, that is a prescription thing, and he would rather have uh, a natural thing. You talked earlier about uh, red clover, and uh, I'm just wondering if you have uh, any thoughts that would be uh specific to somebody that's uh, in his condition. 
Well, yeah, you know, before really giving a solid recommendation, I would, of course, want to know more about the situation, you know, where they've been, where they're at, um, you know, because it's important to take all these things into consideration, what medications they're taking, you know, what supplements they're taking. But there are many uh, herbal diuretics, you know, that that can potentially be useful. Uh, I'll name a few, not that I'm necessarily recommending that you, you know, recommend these to your friend until they've, you know, been evaluated by a professional. But, um, you know, cleavers, chickweed, uh, corn silk, uh, dandelion, th- these are all diuretics. And which one is going to be right for this person really depends on several factors, you know, the, the scope of which is beyond, I think, what a phone call in the air can cover. But um, if they're really interested, you know, tell them to give me a call. I'll give you my number. It's 415-759-1886. That's 415-759-1886, and I'd be happy to share whatever information I have. All right, thank you very much. Time for one more call. Let's go to Lubna in San Jose. You're on About Health. Lubna? Lubna, are you there? Uh, oh, you can't. You speak up. We can't, we can't hear you. Hello? We're having a technical glitch here. All right, let's try Chris in San Francisco. You're on about help. Oh, I'm so glad you um, got me. Um, my mother-in-law is 92, and she was on one of those, uh, Bextra, I think it was, one of those things that they, it's an anti-inflammatory thing, and she's really physically active. She, you know, does her one dance, and she plays the ukulele, and she's a, you know, a very robustly healthy, considering her age, woman. She's had blood pressure problems, so... Uh, they took her off that, and then they said, oh, no, you could just take it, like, every third day or something. And I suggested, well, maybe ibuprofen. Somebody else told her she shouldn't do that because it's in the same class of drugs, and it'll screw up her blood pressure. Her blood pressure's been fine, but I'm just thinking my my, my lover's right now driving her over to an acupuncturist um, that's in her neighborhood. Is there an herbal, any kind of herbal thing that would help her in terms of her... Um, She's really in significant pain, and I did not know that it, it was so significantly impacting her that she was canceling things that she used to love to do because she's in pain since she stopped taking all this stuff. So what is the pain being caused by? Um, you know, joint pain. I think it's probably arthritic. You know, she's got osteoporosis, but she, you know, that's been well under control, I think, because of her exercise, and she eats a lot of things with calcium and all that stuff. But, I mean, she's, she's not your average 92-year-old. And is it osteoarthritis or a different type? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing, and again, you I know. I think, I think, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I know yeah. she has joint pain. Right, but. I mean, you know, the, and again, in this situation, I don't want to avoid answering the question, but there's a lot of information I would need to really be able to make a solid recommendation. But, you know, one really good pain reliever is California poppy. It's a it's a mild opiate, you know, so it's got uh, a chemistry not too dissimilar from you know codeine or other opiate deriv- opium derivatives, but it's mild, you know, it's not addictive and it's a general pain reliever. Now that being said, there might be also other herbs depending on how her situation is presenting that might be helpful to reduce the inflammation and not just kill the pain, you know, and so and that would obviously reduce the pain if the inflammation went down in, in a more meaningful way. Um, but, you know, if, if she is interested, I think really the thing to do is to seek out a practitioner of herbal medicine. It sounds like she's going to see an acupuncturist, and they often will, you know, do herbs also. Um, and if someone can really assess her situation, they might be able to help her, and so she doesn't need to take, you know, medications that are going to harm her otherwise. All right, well, we'd like to thank uh, Dr. M- uh, Muscat for joining us, uh, herbalist in San Francisco Bay Area. Give you a number again, Doc. My phone number is uh, 415-759-1886. R- repeat it again. You know how people give these numbers and then you can't write them down, but go ahead. It's 415-759-1886. And um, let me also give my web address. That's www.sfbmc.org. That's sfbmc.org. And we have information about the clinic on there as well as upcoming classes. So there's that. All right. Well, we, Dr. Williams, sorry we didn't have as much time. But this is the time during which KPFA has to kind of um, shore itself up. Uh, we certainly, by the interest in your visit, we will have you back very, very soon if you would take the time to come with us. So thank you very much. And we're going to take a very quick break, and we're going to come back and talk to you about a special offer that uh, that uh, Dr. Muscat has given us. And um, uh, we will uh, be back after this break. All right.
right, welcome back uh, to KBFA. Yeah, this is the time, as you know, when during, during the pledge period when we're trying to uh, uh, get enough money to um, get enough resources, uh, and sometimes in terms of money, to shore up uh, our station. Uh, as you know, KPFA is a free speech radio, uh, does not accept corporate support, uh, and so we depend upon you for... Um, for uh, our support. So today we're talking about an herbal treatment. That's 25% off the initial visit with uh, Dr. Muscat, plus the cost of the herbs, which can run uh, cons- into a considerable amount of money for $60. The book, The Neo Technique uh, by Debbie Rosas, for $90. Both the consultation and the book for $125. With me is um, Lem Lem. She's going to uh, assist us. Lem Lem Re- Rio? Rio. Rio. You know, I didn't, you know, you could look at me until I didn't have that much sophistication. I'm glad you jumped in to help me. All right, so we're gonna we're asking you to give us the numbers uh, so that we know where people can call. Uh, the number to call is one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two, or if you're in the five one zero area code, call eight four eight five seven three two. You can also pledge your support online at kpfa.org. We are waiting for your calls. Please call us now one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two. Now, you may say here we are again, but, you know, we don't come that often to KPFA to, uh, from KPFA to ask for your support. Uh, if you look at other stations, they're usually on more often and longer. But we depend probably as much on your support as others in order to allow us to, um, to stay uh, on the air. Uh, as you know, this is an opportunity. Uh, there are very few places in the Bay Area where you can get an opportunity to uh, talk directly to a, uh, a physician so, uh, or to, to, to a practitioner, an herbalist, a, ch- a chiropractor, an acupuncturist. Uh, we've had all forms of, um, of uh, primary care doctors and, and alternative practitioners here for you to talk to. And so this is your chance to say, uh, you know, thank you. If you think about one of these calls that you make and uh, one of the calls that you listen to, that may save you a, a co-payment, a visit. Uh, and so consequently, we, uh, we need just a small portion of what we're trying to save you by coming every week to assist you. Uh, the herbal treatment, 25% off the initial consultation plus the herbs. Now, the herbs are really what cost the money. So, um, so we need your support. We need for you to call and uh, assist us. And also the NIA technique, which is, an, uh, which is a, a, a tried and true technique of body work and fitness. Uh, the book uh, for uh, $90, both the consultation uh, and the book for $125. But we need your calls. And the number is 510-848-5732. That's 510-848-5732 or 1-800-439-5732. Yes, we all need to take to do our part to keep alternative health resources like Dr. Lenore available and accessible to the public. Please call us now. We are waiting for calls. We would like to get five callers to go to the phone, 1-800-439-5732, 848-5732. A pledge of $60 will get you the herbal treatment, 25% off the coupon, and the first round of herbs with Dr. Muscat, Muscat and at, in San Francisco. And the book will get... And the, uh, Pledge for ninety dollars will get you the book, The Nia Technique by Dead Rosas. Now a pledge of ninety dollars comes out to be about seventy dollars a month if you want to make monthly payments to KPFA. A pledge of sixty dollars is only five dollars a month. Eight four eight five seven three two one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two. We need five people to go to the phones, please now one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two or 848-5732. Now, you know, herbal medicine is a very old technique. I mean, you know, it's a technique that we don't, that we don't, um, that you don't hear much about uh, on many programs, but I think because KPFA has such a loyal audience and because we have a very broad-based approach to health and wellness, uh, we thought that this was an important um, issue for you to hear. The herbal treatment, 25% off the cost of the evaluation plus the herbs. So if you've got a condition, a medical condition, a chronic condition, if something is not going quite right with you or your medication, this is the time to pledge to KPFA. The book, The Neo Technique, which is a very famous technique, technique of mind and body fitness, uh, a book uh, that was a technique that was originated in the Bay Area, uh, also is uh, available for you. So it's 848-457-32, 848-5732. And we need your help and we need your support. You've got to call and help us. One of the things that we have to do is we must volunteer our time to do this because I have no choice. It's an opportunity to get information to you uh, and I think it is my responsibility 
responsibility as in someone interested in the healing arts to bring you a broad variety of people who come here every week uh, to answer your questions. We've had podiatrists and cardiologists and people talking about thyroid and vitamin E, and we've had just about everybody that you've asked us to have. So now it's your turn to kind of just kind of flow with us and and call eight four eight five seven three two eight four eight five seven three two. The herbal treatment twenty five percent off of the treatment, the initial evaluation plus whatever herbs are required. Book. That's for sixty dollars. Book the Nia Technique by Debbie Rosas, ninety dollars. Both of those for one hundred twenty-five dollars. And in addition to that, you get an association affiliation, a feeling for KPFA. You've got to call us, you've got to join us, and you've got to pledge something uh, to help us uh, stay on the air and to help us stay viable. A pledge of one hundred twenty-five dollars comes out to be about ten dollars a month. Ten dollars a month is what a trip to the movie theater once a month. It's I a think co-payment. It's, it's a co-payment it's a in co-payment. your doctor's <laughs> office. Right. I mean, and you can tell how many times we save people from co-payments. We go ahead. Um, yes, and please support independent, uh, independent people like Dr. Lenore, who who say things like they would provide it to the public regardless of people's ability to pay or not. Uh, and Dr. Mascar, who was being interviewed just now, as you heard him, he said if people are not a are not able to pay when they come to visit him, he can't turn them back. This is what you need to support. This is what we're asking you to support. Please call now, 1-800-439-5732, 848-5732. Pledge $60 and get the herbal treatment, 25% off for, for the first consultation and the first round of herbs, or the book, The Knee Technique by Debbie Rosas for a $90 pledge, or get both for a hundred twenty-five dollar pledge. Eight four eight five seven three two one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two. You know, you know, this is I'm near my birthday, so I'm really working on my own fitness, and I think I'm going to take this book and I'm going to work out. That I, book looks the incredible. Book is, the book is incredible. Yeah. It's a high-powered, energizing workout that gives you a new body and a new life and integration of mind and physical activity by Debbie Rosas and Carlos Rosas. Available at such sophisticated uh, resorts like the Sonoma Mission Inn and the Claremont, which would cost you a hundred and. $25 just to drive by there. Yeah. So here we got the book and we got the opportunity for you to take advantage with great, great, with great with illustrations. That is a hundred, that is $90. And the herbal treatment, a, a, a consultation with Dr. Muscat plus the herbs. And the herbs can run into some serious money. So this gives you an opportunity to experience the whole herbal environment for just $60. More important is not just $60 for the herbal treatment. It's $60 for the herbal treatment. Plus, it shows your support for KPFA um, Community Radio, the original community radio station. Uh, and we are the only place on the dial where you can call and actually talk to your practitioner. So we must have your support. The herbal treatment, 25% off the, the initial visit, plus the herbs. The, the Nia Technique, uh, Debbie Rosas, $90, both for $125. That and plus KPFA makes it a real bargain. Yes, it's extremely crucial to support alternative health practitioners and allow for their voices to be heard like you do here on the KPFA 94.1 FM. Please call us now, show your support. 848-5732 is the number to call or 1-800-439-5732. You can also pledge your support online securely at kpfa.org. Dr. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about different forms of diet. We're going to talk to specific practitioners. We're going to talk um, about thyroid disease. We've got some people coming up to talk about cancer and some of the new theories about cancer and ways to treat it. We're talking to herbalists, podiatrists. We're talking to acupuncturists. Our, sp- our special friend, Dr. Michael King, will be back with us to talk a little bit about his approach to uh, alternative health. He is a traditional practitioner, trained in Harvard, has been here, has moved back to the Bay Area, uh, and I, we know that you would want to assist us um, in keeping this program on. It's a little bit embarrassing. We can't get enough uh, just to s- realizing that one doctor visit, just one doctor visit, and I'm a doctor, I'm going to tell you, you cannot get in my office. We do give away some free but but you, it's difficult to, to run an office when you uh, you're talking about less than sixty or fifty or sixty dollars a visit. Now here's the herbal treatment, twenty five percent off the herbal evaluation. Plus the herbs. Yes. And these herbs can run into a considerable amount of money. That's $60. The Nia Technique, Debbie Rosas, $90, both for $125. What do you think about this book? I I think the book looks really good. I am actually looking forward to reading it myself and practicing some of the things that it offers. Um, I think these both gifts are incredible. Thank you gifts for... um, to to show support to Dr. Lenore's program and to show show support to KPFA. 
um, play an important role in le reclaiming your health and reclaiming community radio. Please call us now. Thank you to all the callers who've gone to the phone. We have five callers on the line and we're waiting for five more to call. 1-800-439-5732 or 848-5732 are the numbers to call. Now, you know, let me, let me, I have this dream. Mm -hmm. This dream is that, that those phone lines would be so full. Yes. I mean, this is what well, this was my dream last night, yes. that we would not have enough screeners to take the calls. Yeah. I, I realize that that, and that is now a dream delayed, but it doesn't have to be a dream denied. Uh, yeah, it's because, because we have a lot of volunteers in the house today right. since it's a holiday. Yeah. Now, we have worked. Uh, it is a holiday. Yes. So there really are people at home today who, sh who might be at work otherwise. Yes. So we should, the phone should be even busier today. That's right. Please uh, call us now, 1-800-439-5700. 8485732 Don't wait until the last minute call now and ask for the herbal treatment 25% off for the first consultation and the first round of herbs or the book The Nia Technique by Debbie Rosas for a $60 pledge or a $90 pledge for the book or both for $125, which comes out to be at about $10 a month. Yes, Dr. Leno? Yeah, and I've worked for a lot of radio stations through the years, I mean, but never have I had the opportunity to do the kinds of things I've been able to do at KPFA. That means select my own guests regardless of their philosophy, bring them to you, let you talk to them as long uh, as I wanted you to do without any commercial interruptions. And I think that is something that I think I, 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 you cannot come to expect. Uh, other radio stations will pretend to have callers that are not pre-screened. We don't have that. We bring you everybody we can find. We let you talk to them as long as we can. And I think that that ultimately saves you not only your money, but saves you good health. So this herbal treatment, 25% off a coupon for $60, the Nia Technique, Debbie Roses for $90, both for $125, or you could just give money. You don't, you don't have to give money for a particular herbal treatment or a gift. Just a way to say thank you, not to me, but to the people that we bring here who give up their time to come uh, and, and excitingly to talk to you about uh, various issues in health and to answer your questions. We want to thank today's food donors, though. I'll let you do that because I, I, you have a more international flavor and I can't pronounce all these names. <laughs> Hi, before uh, we get to that, this is Mickey, and I just want to say we have just a couple of minutes. And for people who can't pledge at the $60 level, we'll accept your $25 pledge. That gives you voting privileges here at the station. Again, as Dr. Lenore mentioned, we have a variety of people br um, being brought to you. We have uh, somebody coming in in March to talk about dental health. We'll be talking about women's issues. And you have the luxury of having that consultation right in your own home or in your own office or in your own car. You don't have to go to the doctor's office and sit waiting with a magazine. So please pledge. Again, that's 1-800-439-5732 or 510-439-5732. And uh, Lim Lim. Yes, the number to call again, 1-800-439-5732 or 848-5732. It's true, we only have a couple of minutes left. So please, those of you who've been waiting for the last moment, here's your chance to call. And as Mickey said, you don't have to pay $60 if you can't afford it. Whatever you can afford is welcome. We welcome what you can give, 848-5732, 1-800-439-5732. The herbal treatment is 25% off the initial visit, plus the herbs. And I say that can run a considerable amount of money. The Nia Technique, the book for $90, both for $125, or just an unrestricted pledge to KPFA. Uh, really, what we're doing here is we're really trying to, um, we're really associating all this with a, what we consider our, 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 our wonderful radio station and your wonderful radio station. Really, no other radio station has as much community involvement in the country as uh, KPFA. No Pacifica station, I would imagine has as much community involvement in the country. This is your station. So this is a chance for you to call and pledge and support us. Um, we uh, 848 uh, 5732 or 1-800-439-5732. Show Dr. Lenore support for the service that he provides the community, the public, every week um, away from his precious time. I mean, he has a lot of work to do, but he comes here to provide service to the public, and you need to show support to that. 848-5732, 1-800-439-5732. Quickly, I'll thank the two today's food donors, Casa Latina, Panaderia, Arismendi in Embryville, The Big Shop, and Noah's Bagels. 
Thank you for providing us with food for the volunteers. And, you know, it's not really thanking me because, I mean, I've never gotten as much thanks as I get for working on KPFA from a variety of you as I go about out and about. Everybody seems to be extremely appreciative, but it's for the people who take their time to come here. So I'd like to thank you for joining us. Nikki, I'd like to thank you. I'd like to thank Lem Lem. But most of all, and I'd like to thank Dr. Muscat, who we'll have back again soon. But most of all, thank you for joining us on today's edition of About Health. Remember, health is your biggest asset. I'm Dr. Mike Lenore. We'll talk again next week. KPFA's Winter Fun Drive begins on Tuesday, February 8th. And of course, every time we have a fun drive, you hear that we don't have enough phone volunteers. You can help out now by signing up for a phone volunteer shift by calling 510-848-6767, extension 618. If members of your nonprofit organization, labor union, or community group sign up to volunteer, we will happily thank your organization on the air. The fun drive will last from Tuesday, February 8th through Tuesday, February 22nd, and we'll need 